Well, when we talk about a new style, a new look, what... This is probably a really big topic by itself. What would you want to change? And is the goal to radically shift things? Because I did want to eventually get to the idea where people, I'm sure, you know, we've talked about the the, the forum post, KDE looks old and outdated and people have brought up this idea <laughs> many, many times before. And I'm sure you've got plenty of thoughts on, on, on like plenty of thoughts on this, I think of... Um, have you ever seen the have you ever seen the picture of um a customer explains a swing they want to have developed and then it's like what each of the different stakeholders think the the customer is trying to explain and then it's like what the customer <laughs> actually wants at the end i feel like a big part of kde looks old and outdated is exactly that they have this idea yeah. that they want something to change but they don't actually know exactly what it is that they want to yeah. change. And the I, the first thing that comes to mind is it it's an older design, therefore it looks old. Yeah, the, yes, this is a can of worms, mm. but the I think what is important to mention in in this regard is that users are right. Mm -hmm. Like users are okay in expressing their feelings about how they experience their systems. Mm. And that if their systems are not helpful to them, then they're not good systems. And I think, like, I know that sometimes, uh, you know, anybody that gets a little bit of criticism or, or, or revision from an online nobody or, like, you know, some random nicknames somewhere out there in the ether, uh, it's, it's difficult to say, to give validation to that, right? And to say, sure, you're right. Like, I'll do exactly as you say. I, I struggle with that myself. So like, but I think what in user experience, what is important is that you want to understand how users feel and why they feel that way. They may not be able to articulate that, but the feeling is there. Their mm. feeling is real. And so how do you work with that? So one of the things that I do is when I speak to people that, you know, come in the chat and say, hey, I want to, you know, I, I want you guys to change your whole desktop. It's not great. Whatever it is. Say, okay, let's talk about, you know, what are the areas where you feel the most friction? What are the spaces where, you know, you want to do this and that? And, and what's stopping you from doing it? Like, what, what, is the, what, what is the rock in the shoe that you're talking about? Mm. And, and so they explain, of course, in their own terms or through social media, how they feel, whatever. Okay, I pay attention to that. In fact, I spend a great deal of time uh, watching videos on YouTube that review Plasma releases hmm. because that's the moment when a lot of people sort of take it to the internet to say these are the things that could be better. Um, but yeah, they will probably not be able to explain it to you in a way that is developer oriented or graphic or user experience oriented. And it's just kind of our work to, to sort of filter those types of comments and get to the, to the main point. Mm. Then the other side of that, that question is, uh, gut feelings are also generalized perceptions. And you want to work with people in a way that their generalized perception is positive about your system. Mm. And so, one of the things that like are important to do is uh, we want to take that feedback and think of ways that you know you could apply a change mm. and uh, and then you want to think through that change and why people are saying that. Also, something we do often is we try to check: is this a one-off type of comment or is it a generalized kind of mm. comment? Do, mm. do, does one person feel that way and they just happen to be very loud? about it or is there a group of people that totally agree with this and they should change that um then in those cases we try to you know balance it better but at the same time you know it, again we we hit this wall often which is basically can you do something right now with the tools that you have and the setup that you have or do you have can you afford to ignore it and or maybe wait until something easier comes along the way or somebody submits an, a, a merge request so, so you have to balance those questions. And I'm sure that, you know, not just our volunteer shop, but also companies experience this where 
you can't just do everything mm. and execute everything any customer or user says. And so you have to filter those out. But I, at least for myself, yes, there are people who definitely troll and they want to just, you know, g gather attention by making negative comments about something. Mm -hmm. I personally try to filter for those, but also uh, look at the core and uh, basic understanding, the gut feeling that people are, are looking into and why they feel that way. Mm -hmm. Not only that, there's an, an, a third component of this, which is the appearance of newness, mm -hmm. um, which is a uh, kind of a psychological perception, right? Like if we, for example, said, uh, think about it this way, Apple should have stuck to the, to the iPhone 4 design because it's been beloved so much, right? Sure. And all they need to do from then on until the end of time is just update the internals. Mm -hmm. and keep the same UI. How would you feel about that in today's world, right? No matter how much you fight it, there is a, an, a, an, a feeling of this is old, and old is probably not as enticing. And, and so why do companies and, and, and groups and circles try to develop something new is because they have goals in mind about, for example, attracting new users, mm. uh, make simplifying your interactions, uh, tending to new uh, modes of distribution. For example, like uh, famously KDE runs on the Steam Deck. Mm. Uh, KDE can run on phones, can run on TVs, and the TVs are not going to stay the same. The phones are not going to stay the same. And so do you want to tailor to that and I think there is an, I struggle with this when I, when I hear from users, but I feel like there's always that feedback uh, in our community when somebody says, you should just, can you make something new? Can you, you know, mm. can we be more like Mac OS or Windows, whatever, whatever the argument may be. And we sort of jump in and dismiss that and say, well, you know, we're not making changes just because Mac OS does it, right? It's enticing. It's, it's, uh, they have, world-class designers over there. So like, you know, fantastic work. Um, so it's enticing and, and you feel a little bit left behind. And so there's also that so, uh, psychological aspect of, of changing things. And so, but sometimes uh, as, as much as I love change as a designer, I also have to filter for those things and think, is this person really looking for just a coat of paint? Or are they looking, are they trying to resolve a user experience workflow that just is broken and it's not working right? And in user experience, there is a concept that says that well-designed uh, interfaces tend to be perceived as more usable. Mm. So you may not have changed anything about the interaction in your UI, but because you changed the color palette, people think, oh, this is better. This is cool. Like, I like it. It seems much easier to use. And you could easily tell them, like, nothing has changed, right? And so the, the visceral reaction to some of these visual changes is really good and it's well perceived. So we want to generally work on stuff like that. And I know it's not the best argument for 100% of people, but it's a good argument that keeps things fresh. And in my mind, I think that with the design system, we would be able to attend to those types of, types of discussions way easier than we do today. Because somebody could just simply go to the design system and say, okay, I want my buttons to be round now, so I'll just change them all, export, and present that to the developer. Something we probably cannot do today. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be a, a long-winded answer for why changing things is important. I, there's, there's two things I wanted to mention there. One, you mentioned how changing color palettes can make it feel like something has changed, even though really it hasn't actually been that much. And that just reminded me of a, I think it was a presentation about Counter-Strike Source, where people mm -hmm. were complaining about ping issues with servers and how everything felt really slow. And then one day the devs just decided to take your ping number and just divide it by two. 
and all of a sudden people felt like the game was suddenly <laughs> so much better the ping was so it, 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 so much less lag so there there are like obviously yeah. that's a little a little trick and that you probably shouldn't do that if there actually is an issue but, but yes you know taking it taking a user experience minded you can think numbers are psychological signifiers to people right 